and detailing uh, certain of the data data that is being disseminated to the public. One, for instance, was a report to the effect that there were 750 fires in the city last night, when the truth of the matter is that while we had a large amount, somewhere in the neighborhood of 250, it was 250 fires. Only a few of them were, of, you know, a real um, a major proportion. I'm in the process now of meeting with the adjutant general. I'm going to leave this press conference to meet with the adjutant general, with the governor, and with the with uh, uh, Chief Lally and the state troopers uh, to ascertain just exactly you know, what will be our posture uh, during the coming day uh, and for the next couple of days. Uh, I think an announcement will be made after consultation with the governor that a curfew will be in effect tonight from about 7 o'clock uh, to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Well, I think that there was a considerable amount of damage done last night in Baltimore, but uh, considerably less than what I observed in Washington the day before. Uh, it's bad. It's, it's very bad. A lot of damage, unnecessary damage was done, uh, certainly to no one's benefit. Uh, certainly did not benefit any civil rights movement or anything else. Uh, we're patrolling the area now. The, the situation, I think, was pretty well contained by around 12.30, 12 to 12.30 last night. We had no reports of any fires or looting or any incidents after that time. Uh, the situation in Baltimore right now, I think, is uh, pretty much under the control of the of the National Guard and the police. What plans do you have for your men this afternoon and tonight? Uh, we certainly intend to keep them uh, in action. How many men have been committed? Into Baltimore? Uh, well, I, I couldn't give you a breakdown on the actual uh, areas. Uh, we wouldn't. Be but you have to even have a determination of which is East Baltimore and which is Central Baltimore. And we just do not uh, give the area that thing because we're continually moving the troops. They're not placed in static positions. What is your total manpower we have, availability? Uh, better than 6,000. General, have any elements come in from outside Baltimore to uh, participate in the National disorder? Guard? No, no, I meant uh, elements from uh, that might be disorder. Oh, yeah. You mean the so-called outside agitators? Yes right now. I, I feel very optimistic about it, and I don't think it's going to get any worse. I think it's going to improve from here in. Are there any reports of any looting or uh, uh, Yes, there, there's been some. Of course, a lot of these stores uh, are sporadic, You're hitting around the city, and, and stores that uh, I don't think there's much new breaking in. But they have returned to some of the places that uh, have not been boarded up yet, or which haven't been carried. Any to None whatever. General, where did the disturbance first break out? As my understanding, it was down in the uh, Gay Street area. General, do you have a breakdown on injuries and deaths? I think the police can give it to you. We haven't attempted to maintain it because, of course, we came in uh, well after the, the uh, thing was started. General, you said uh, you had about 6,000 troops. So how many do you have on the street at any one time? Uh, majority of them. We, try to, we try to keep the greatest number possible on the streets and at the same time maintain an adequate reserve, which does not answer any questions. You, you uh, have not indicated how many more will be coming in. Uh, no, we're bringing uh, up, uh, we've alerted, to all, the entire Maryland National Guard has been alerted. They have not all been moved to Baltimore. Have you conferred with the Negro leadership on this matter? Uh, not to a great extent. I've met with uh, several of them uh, just casually throughout the city, but uh, not to go through any uh, actual conference on the uh, events that have happened. Do you anticipate any such conference? I'd be happy to participate in it. You General, pleased with the performance of your troops, loot? General, thus far? Pardon? Pleased with the performance of your troops? Thus Very much. They General, have, is there additional looting going on this morning in the Greenmount Avenue area? Uh, there have been uh, reports of sporadic looting uh, rather generally throughout the area. Did you send additional troops over there to help? We have responded to them and we have tried to uh, put sufficient troops in the area to be able to observe and to arrest the uh, looters. I think it's important to know that under the new law, the National Guard personnel have exactly the same uh, privileges and rights as any police officer. They are privileged to make an arrest under this law. Have you sealed off the affected areas from the public? Uh, the only thing we've done in that line and on several of the extremely narrow streets, we have blocked traffic for, uh, in, in several block areas. What do you think is going to happen after nightfall tonight? Do you expect to be able to keep the situation in control? Yes, I certainly think that the vast majority of the people are going to obey the uh, governor's curfew. 
as they, they did last night. But of course, last night it was uh, set at a fairly late hour. It was 11 o'clock, and also it was announced rather late. And I don't. I think a lot of people uh, did not know there was a curfew. But uh, certainly everyone knows it by now, and I'm quite sure that they will be off the street. What will happen to anyone caught off the street after the curfew? Uh, they have violated the uh, the law, which uh, subjects them to I think it's a, a sixty day sixty days in jail. I think is the maximum. I'd have to check that, and a hundred dollars fine. General, how long had you been anticipating any trouble in the city of Baltimore? I was completely surprised that any trouble occurred in Baltimore. I did not think it would happen, and uh, I'm quite sure that it was uh, just as much a shock to the entire community. But you don't as it feel was it was me. planned or organized in any way. There uh, possibly was some uh, some planning behind, but I, I've seen no indication, nor has anyone come up with any indication of uh, organizing a ticket pin on any group. Difficulties. No city, Baltimore or anywhere else in the nation, can ever hope to exist if we don't come to a situation where decent, responsible, God-fearing people run the community. My purpose in appearing before you this morning is to report that I feel that I have worked myself out of a job here in Baltimore. My mission, when I assumed command of the forces last Sunday evening, was to restore law and order to the city of Baltimore, and I believe that mission has been accomplished. I am told that the instant rate for the last three nights and two days has been lower than occur during normal circumstances. I'm sure that the mayor and the governor also agree with this assessment of mine that the Federal Forces mission has been accomplished. As a result, I expect that the federal forces will very shortly be withdrawn and that the National Guard will be defederalized. While I'm aware of this criticism, I think it's been from a relatively small segment of the, of the population here in Baltimore. The application of force, or the degree of force, is of course a problem that any commander has to wrestle with in a situation of this kind. And I can assure you that I have wrestled with it constantly uh, since I've been here. Obviously, the degree of force that is, needs to be applied is going to vary with uh, every set of circumstances. Children would have been safe under these kinds of circumstances, and neither would any home in the city. Yes, uh, the uh, city of Baltimore, various agencies have been working together uh, for many years as a uh, civil defense agency team. And uh, these representatives from the various city agencies and from the private community uh, charitable agencies and relief agencies have been working together. They know each other, they know their plans, and uh, they were not strangers to each other last night by any means. How long did it take you after the notice of crisis to put the plan into effect? Uh, the plan went into effect right away, and the various agency representatives were on board at the uh, Disaster Control Center in approximately one hour and 15 minutes. How many refugees of this disorder did you serve, and what services are provided? Uh, we have opened up approximately 15 uh, different refugee collection centers throughout the city, which are churches. And we also have one central center at Eastern High School. Uh, anyone needing assistance, uh, either social service assistance, food, uh, beds, lodging, uh, can go to any one of these churches and they will be in turn transported to Eastern High School where these facilities are available. This morning we noticed that that main uh, refugee center at Eastern High was uh, empty except for personnel on duty. Is there any reason for this? How, did you serve people last night or people this morning? 
Uh, no, I think that uh, the fact that it's empty may be uh, from two things. It, first of all, uh, the center was open very quickly after the emergency arose. Secondly, it may very well be that the people uh, who were involved last night uh, were able to return to their homes and that they do have a place to go. And it may well be that we will not need to keep this center in operation. How long do you plan to keep it in operation? What will determine uh, when or if you close it? Uh, the center will be in operation for the duration of the emergency. As I reflect back on incidents, the incidents of the last few days, I feel that my command here and also the people of Baltimore have been rather fortunate, particularly if we look at the circumstances that existed last Saturday and Sunday, and also compare what happened here with what happened in other cities uh, when they had civil disturbances. I attribute the success of our operations here to several things, but primarily to the splendid cooperation that I have received from all the state and local officials at every level. General, there has been some criticism about the way the forces at your command handled the looting here. It's been suggested that force should have been met with force. I can just say that I wish the decision was as simple to me as it is to those people who would not be required to live by their decision. There are a number of factors involved when you come to considering force that I think perhaps people forget. And the first one is the value of life. What value do you attach to life? Is a loaf of bread or a pint of whiskey or a scorched suit or a pair of shoes worth a life? Now, I have 11,000 troops deployed in this city, and it would be up to each one of those individuals to make that decision. And I submit that this is a decision that even the wisest man would have difficulty in making under tense circumstances. Another thing is we know from experience that when there is the firing and discriminate firing, that more innocent people have been killed than have the guilty ones. And unfortunately, those that perhaps uh, should be killed uh, almost invariably get away. If you can say anybody should be killed, and I'm not advocating that. Another factor I think that we must consider